What's going on, Teach? How's it going, man? Take a seat, take a seat, get your notepads out. Today, we're gonna be teaching you guys how to catch more fish this fall. The weather is getting right. Check out these numbers right here. Now today, it's gonna be 97 degrees, but next week, whoo-wee, it's getting good. These fish about to start biting, and I don't want you to miss out filling up your freezer this fall. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk about where these crappy go, how you gonna put more limits in your boat. Welcome to crappy school, class is in session. So let's break down fall fishing. So we're gonna deep dive right into this. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe down below. This video is free and also to subscribe to my channel is also free. We're approaching 10,000 subscribers and I'd like to take this journey with you to teach you more about crappy fishing. That's why I'm creating this crappy series. So on today's topic, we're talking about the fall transition. You know, I, I want to go in depth on this transition and because this is where, you know, right now in the summertime, we're going from brush pile to brush pile, you know, maybe getting one, maybe getting two here and ending up not getting a limit and sometimes squeaking out a limit with a couple small fish. This time of year is when you go from you know the picky eaters to we get a little bit of a transition that they actually want to eat guys like they've, they've had the stomach flu all summer didn't want to eat nothing and now they done pulled up at your local Mackey d's and they're out there ordering four number ones and a 20 piece nugget with some sweet and sour sauce but the thing is guys the fish you know Right now, I can go on the lake. The water temperature is probably 80 degrees. It's 97 degrees today, but next week it's going to be dropping, which we're going to cover that in just a minute. So y'all stick around. Right now, I can go out there. Every, almost every brush pile from 25 foot to 10 foot is just covered with fish. You might catch two off of that brush pile. I don't care how what presentation. I don't care if you use manners or what. You might catch two. Sometimes you look up and catch five or six. It, I mean, that's fishing. But when this fall transition happens, what's going to happen is these water temperatures are going to start cooling off rapidly because of the nighttime temperature being colder. I do not care what the daytime temperature is. If that nighttime temperature stays getting colder, like this week coming, we got 60s all the way down to, I think, 54 on one of them. I might be wrong. I mean, you've seen the picture. Correct me if I'm wrong. But those nighttime temperatures are what's going to drop your lake water temperature. I mean, yeah, the daytime temperature does help, but the nighttime temperatures is the coldest, you know, kind of self-explanatory. It's colder at night, guys. So what this is going to do, it's not even about the crappy. It's going to fire up the plankton in your lake. What do shad eat? Plankton. So where is the shad going? Where the plankton goes. You know, we got this whole circle of life going on right now. The plankton are going. They're in the creeks. Shad gonna come eat the plankton. Crappy gonna come eat the shad. I mean, that's kind of the whole deal. And then you go into a winter pattern where, you know, they're kind of going back out. It's kind of like a rinse and repeat thing. But, the thing I really want to emphasize at the beginning of this video is you've got to find the right creek. I don't care if you go out there to uh, old Mr. PD Creek down the road. If this creek is like one mile long and you've got another creek, you know, 40 yards up there that's three or four miles long, where do you think the majority of the fish are going to be? Not in old Mr. PD Creek. There are certain creeks on your lake, on your body of water, if you're in a pond or whatever that's creek fed, uh, a river reservoir that has cutoffs on it and jetties and all that. There are certain creeks on your body of water that are just better and provide more things for plankton to eat. It is not about the shad. It is not about the crappy. If you have a creek that has a lot more vegetation than any other creek in the lake, or if you have a river that has a lot more vegetation than any other river in your lake, there is going to be an abundance of plankton 
equals an abundance of shad equals an abundance of crappy. And, you know, just like me, I'm a bigger guy. If I go to McDonald's 20 times a month, I'm going to get bigger. So if the shad's going to this creek and the crappy are just gorging on them, you're going to have bigger fish out of this creek and more of them. Hope that makes sense to you guys. So first step of fall fishing. We go from a summertime, not catching the many, and then we go to the creeks. Now there's one major difference between all of this. There is balls of crappie right now. These are going to spread out. You may find your ball here and there, but normally you're going to have wolf packs. So these are going to be spread out through the creek channel. You know, they may be at the mouth of the creek right on the main lake point. They may be right off the main lake to where the creek comes out. They may go in this creek and feed and come back out. So there's not going to be a huge abundance of fish in one area of the creek. There may be 10 or 15 here. There may be 10 or 15 over here. Now that's where forward facing sonar comes in handy. But if you don't have it, don't worry guys, because if you follow what I'm going over, you can still catch these fish. Now, the, the next thing about fall fishing. Now, this is key. In the spring and early summer, we had what they call a shad spawn. Now, this is where the shad reproduce. You know, all the crappy go shallow, all the bass, whatever. They're eating, you know, all the fry, all the shad that's up there. So, you have a less, a, a less bigger population of mature shad. So your two to three inch shad, you know, there's less of a population. Now, yes, crappy have a small brain. Don't get me wrong, they do, they have a small brain. But if you don't think that crappy can tell the difference between, you know, a shad that's supposed to be an inch, inch and a half, two inches, versus a mature shad that's three inches that they're not able to feed on a lot, you're wrong. I, I have had plenty of days where they're keyed in on a certain inch of bait or a certain profile, and they will not touch anything else. So that's where Crappy Bang Jigs comes in. So yeah, I'm gonna plug myself in this video because this is, you know, me and dad's company. You know, that's who sponsors this video. So when you're talking about a one inch to a one and a half inch shad that's swimming through the water, what gets better than a monkey milk? A little minnow, you know? If that's not going to work, what gets better than the newly, re re uh, newly released swim bait coming right through them? I mean, that's all you need. Throw in a crappy man green. What more could you ask for? Anyways, enough with a selfless plug. Monkey, uh, natural colors are going to be phenomenal this time of year because they're so keyed in on bait they're not just sitting there waiting on a meal they're actively chasing these fish and if you put something that looks like what they're chasing they're gonna they're more likely to eat it now you could go out there with a pink jig and probably catch as many as i'm talking about now but that's fishing you know pretty much where these fish go what they're doing they're chasing the shad how do you catch them what do you do so we're gonna go ahead and talk about no sonar if you do not have electronics, now I am going to be making an electronics video probably right after I make this video just to have a couple going out this week. But I'm going to be going over budget electronics. So if you do not have electronics, get out there as early as you can. I'm talking right at daybreak. Head to the biggest creek on your lake that your boat's able to stand because I understand I have a 14 foot boat. By the way, if you have a boat for sale and you want to take payments, hit me up on uh, Facebook because I need a bass boat by 18 foot. Anyways, if you have a small boat and you're out there, you know, don't, don't go over your head. If the wind's going to be blowing straight into that creek, you're not going to be able to go out there and fish. Find a creek that's out the wind, you know, but find the biggest creek you can out the wind. Go out there, you know, take you an anchor with you. Find the creek channels. The creek channels normally are going to be the deepest part of that whole little section of lake, you know, or the river channel, vice versa. If you're fishing a river, find the deepest channel. All right, you're, you're there real early in the morning. What do shad do early in the morning? They ball up on the top of the, the, the lake, water, whatever, and they're going to be popping. 
you know, they're up there eating the plankton, the bugs, whatever. You want to find areas that have this. And when you find those areas, drop below them and see if you can't catch some. And then when the sun gets up, find the structure that's near them. You know, whether it be a dock, whether it be a, uh, a lay down on the bank, uh, a brush pile that you find by getting hung. But that's how I would catch them without electronics. Now with the electronics, stroll down the creek channel with your uh, side scan on. You see balls of shad and you start seeing a bunch of white dots, stop and fish. If you have live scope, you know, it's not time for you yet. You can go out there and snipe plenty of fish. Do not get me wrong. But us with live scope that like to target the two to three pound class fish, we got about another month and a half before we start slinging them slabs in. But you can get out there and put these, put the monkey milk, put the swimmer in front of their face and you're gonna have a hell of a time. And it's a lot easier to find them with live scope as everybody knows. It takes a lot of the guesswork, a lot of the time that you have to be out there. Now, once you get out there, you know, that's why I highly recommend the little minnow and the swimmer because these are the two ways that you're gonna be able to catch them. You're either gonna dead stick this bait near them and they're gonna come up and bite it or you're gonna swim right over them and make them bite. So that about covers it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's crappy school episode. Hope you learned something about fall time fishing. Remember guys, hit the thumbs up button for me and I'm gonna see you on the next one.